Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Wild Dan Wooly Game coming to you live from the middle of nowhere, the center of everywhere, to give you one of my favorite games ever that I don't show off nearly enough. It's called Kerbal Space Program. I'm sure you've all heard it one time or another. Um, I really love this game. I've sunk probably thousands, not thousands, but hundreds of hours into this game, maybe over a thousand, uh, just playing it, experimenting with different designs, and really just failing and failing and failing, failing harder the next time, but eventually succeeding. Anyways, uh, what I'm going to bring to you today is just really showing you how to make a real basic aircraft design. Um, just something to really just kind of get you to understand the basic principles of aerodynamics and kind of how to fly it and make it stable. So I've already got a pre-made pre design here that I made just before this. Oh, and remember, like, comment, subscribe. Especially subscribe, that means a ton to me. Uh, I like to play a lot of plane related games as you can see between this and War Thunder as well as maybe some other games every now and again. But anyway, so I wanted to make the real basic, basic, basic design uh, and I'll kind of go into how I made this, um, you know, real quick before we, we launch it and just see how it works, right? So in order to start building any, anything in this game, you need a way to control it. And the way I decided to do this, especially with a lot of uh, new players, it, it makes more sense just to go with a uh, a manned uh, sort of uh, thing. I went with a Mark One cockpit. So this has one Kerbal um, that you can actually fit inside of it. And it's a relatively light uh, and small. Um, it's a relatively light and small uh, cockpit. So it's a 1.25 uh, meter wide cockpit, which has a capability to have these uh, sit flush behind it, these uh, fuselage parts. Another option that you could do that I really like to do is to use a Mark II drone core. And these have some really cool benefits to them. So, I mean, they're much more expensive and especially with research and career mode, they take a lot, they take a bit longer to get to. Excuse me, I was gross. They take a <laughs> little bit longer to get to, but they do have uh, greater electric charge. They weigh a sixth of what this weighs. You know, I mean, it's it does have its benefits, but I'm not going to get into that right now. So, from the cockpit, where do you go? You go back. The typically the cockpit is always going to sit at the very front. Drone cores tend to sit at just about the front, at least in my designs. Um, so they have this laid out pretty pretty well here. You can add a fuel tank just behind it. So, and that's what I did. I added two Mark I liquid fuel fuselages just behind it, which is what these are. And one cool thing about these fuselages is that you can actually reduce how much fuel is in this. So, that's what I'll do. I was testing it out earlier, and it just has way too much fuel, so I want to lighten it up quite a bit. And also by reducing fuel, you do make it less expensive. So right now it's sitting at about 7.93 tons. Let's see if I can get it a little bit lower. How much reducing this by 120 units will do. So it goes down by about 0.6 tons. And the tail end of this also has some fuel. So just to kind of balance it out, I'll remove that, some of it. Uh, and now it's about a ton lighter. <laughs> just by removing all that fuel, but it's still incredibly flyable, um, albeit it will be a bit faster now. So, uh, that brings me to my next point. Just by having these two things here, as you could see, it's not going to be long enough. I mean, you could technically make this a relatively small design. You can make this, I've done it before, but there's one fuselage part with fuel in it, and that's it. But I'm not going to do that today. I want to go with a real basic design for you to understand the principles of how this game works. So, there's two options you can go from here. I mean, you could technically just end it here and then make it kind of like a, a small delta wing uh, design, put move this up here, but that's not what, again, I'm going to show you. What you, what I did, and there's, again, two different options for you to kind of do from here, is one, my initial build was just to add a structural fuselage. And as you can see, it's hollow on the inside. I didn't go with that. I wanted something functional, so I went to aerodynamics. And I just kind of integrated an engine nacelle right here 
I believe that's what it is. The Mark I, yeah, the Divertless Super Sign can take. I just kind of put it in. That way it also has an air intake and it's got liquid fuel. It doesn't even weigh all that much. It's 1.18 tons. So it takes care of two issues right there. It's, it carries my fuel plus it has an air intake, which is what I need for a jet. Which brings me to the jet. And again, I'm trying to take this into consideration where you might not uh, have enough, you know, when when you're playing career, you might not have enough uh, science to research or, you know, money to purchase a lot of these things. So I went with the J404 Panther. It's a very uh, good aircraft engine and something that's not really going to be out of the reach of everybody. And this also has the benefit of being able to go into afterburning mode. And also, before you know, I just right clicked on that, you can actually limit the thrust to be a percentage of whatever the throttle is. So you could have it at 59.5% of the throttle at any given moment, and it's never going to get higher than 60% or 59.5% you know, of that total power. That being said, with all these, uh, it just integrates fuel directly into this every now and again. You will need to add fuel lines to it, um, which can be done through this, um, but that will not be necessary in this case. Um, two final pieces I did, uh, three I guess, was I added the structural wing, D, and you want to add elevons to these. So that's what this is. This isn't a small elevon. Um, let's see, it is the elevon 4, which sits flush with the, um, with the structural wing D, uh, and then I also added some regular uh, delta wings. So these are small delta wings, but these are just again regular ones. And simply what I did for control surfaces, I added two Elevon ones uh, to either, you know, to the outside and the inside. The outside is more important, but the inside also helps as well. And essentially these are rather than two Elevons wide, these are one Elevon wide. Uh, one thing to note, it is better to do this when sitting at kind of so here rather than here it's just easier to add the elevons and everything else but it still works it's just easier to do so and before I, I get going one thing you always want to do especially I mean it's not so important here uh, because I'm not going to anything uh, too dramatic but you want to add some sort of electricity generation or battery packs to your um, you know to whatever thing you're using so especially with when you're not manning it these are very important um, and also you're going to want to add the um, which I'm called the landing gears so I use kind of a tricycle sort of thing or whatever I forget it's just I use a nose gear and two tail gears essentially and um, you know, one thing I did notice, and I'll just kind of show the, the you this here. So if you look, so I'm just going to drop those. So this is where the thrust comes out. The center of mass is right here, and the center of lift is pretty far back. Once you add the canard wings, it moves forward a little bit, but more importantly, it gives you lift up front. So I'll show you how that is in just a moment, but this is what makes my plane able to get off the ground. So anyways, let's see how this thing flies. I mean, I was testing it before. Oof. So let's just uh, see how this thing flies. I was testing it before, but, um, you know, you want to see how it flies when it weighs a ton less, which this is a new setup. So. As I was saying before, you can actually toggle the mode. Right now, it's not in afterburning mode. Let's switch to afterburning. So it goes from 72, 73 kilonewtons to... I'm not going to take it off this yet. Okay. Whoa, it's kind of fast. Okay. So as you can see, you can actually have a lot of wind coming off of this, which is whatever. Um, that means that you're bleeding, you're just using wasteful energy, it's not really uh, an efficient way of doing it. So let's put that into overdrive by going to Afterburner. It just doubles your thrust. 
and my fuel consumption went up by like three times. It's just absolutely ridiculous. And that's something else that you do have to note. So the more thrust you have, uh, at least when it comes to jet engines, the higher fuel consumption you'll typically have, especially when it's in lower altitudes. Um, and one other thing, I, I don't know if you noticed that I toggled the SAS, but this is kind of like a dumb autopilot. Very important, I have it bound to my T key, but sometimes what will happen is by having the SAS toggled, it'll kind of, when you make a simple adjustment yourself, it'll just kind of throw your plane off um, rather than just kind of adjust, help you adjust. So, as you can see, I'm just continually burning thrust. I'm just ridiculous wasting fuel. I'm going about a thousand meters per second, and this is a very basic design, no less. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is a pretty stable design. I'll show you in just a... Can I hit it that? I did. I'll show you in a second here. Like, this isn't normal. I'm not... I don't have anything too dramatic when it comes to, um, you know, settings. It's just basic, normal settings. Um... It's just basic, normal settings, things that you're going to encounter in most of your games. Um, let's see here. So, and that's another thing I don't know if you noticed just now. But by going ridiculously fast, I exposed myself to basically a uh, atmospheric heating. Which is very dangerous. So, I'll see if I can kind of replicate that here. Um, I might be able to. So now that I'm higher up in the atmosphere, I will be encountering less uh, air resistance. So I should be able to go faster, although atmospheric forces will be on me a little bit less than they were, uh, say, about five or 6,000 meters down. So let's just see. And you'll start to notice some of the temperature. Uh, there will be temperature bars that come up around me. Uh, I believe there should be. So, eh, if I can maintain this speed, let's see, I may just crash down to really just try to maximize my speed. Eh, it's not going to happen. Eh, it might. It might. So you might see it real soon, but I had it happen on the uh, on the engine just a few moments ago uh, when we were going really fast before. So my plane wants to slow down, but because I'm getting lower to the ground, my fuel, I'm starting, whoa, that's really crazy. See right there? It's getting close to overheating. You can just throw this thing into some crazy maneuvers because of how stable it is. Delta wings, and especially canards, give you a lot of maneuverability. I'm a big fan of them, and I include them in almost all of my jet designs in this game. But as you can see, I got really far away from the home base. I can make it back, no issues. But anyways, this is Wild and Willie Gaming, coming to you with a real basic jet design to show you kind of the basic principles. You can copy this if you want, but I don't really find it necessary. Uh, I just want to show you guys how to, if you haven't known already, just to make the most basic of the basic while still being really fast and really fun. Anyways, see you guys in the sky and uh, take care.